welcome to my second little tutorial. Before I go on to the really technical stuff, um, I want to look at something that's fairly basic really to photography and something that needs addressing early on because if you don't get this into your head you can be distracted quite easily. Um, there are a lot of people out there trying to get you to spend loads and loads of money on the latest gear. Um, you'll be bombarded with messages about how your camera is rubbish and uh, you know, the new mirrorless camera from Sony or the new Nikon piece of magic or whatever is so much better than what you've already got and that uh, if you really want to be a good photographer that you've got to spend big bucks and move on. Um, you don't need to spend 10 grand on a camera body, you don't need to spend 5 grand on a lens. Um, that was my, my first DSLR, it's a little Nikon D50. Um, I based my business around this for, for several years. I learned digital photography on this little camera. Uh, I won awards um, with photos taken on this little camera. Uh, often people didn't believe that I'd got a camera like this. They thought I must have a, a, a massive, yeah, really expensive thing. Um, I can't remember how much this cost me, now, two or three hundred quid at the time. Um, six megapixels in this. Your phone will have more megapixels than that. And yet it was a fantastic little camera. Um, that's a fairly modern lens, fairly new lens, a Sigma, big zoom. Um, but with the Nikon, this little the D50, I just had kit lenses for five or six years uh, and it was fine. No, no problem at all. So don't let anybody tell you that uh, you need to spend lots of money or you need the latest camera. You don't. By far the most important piece of equipment you've got as a photographer isn't this all this. It's not the six inches in front of your eyes, it's the six inches behind your eyes, it's in here. And it's, it's a cliche, but it is absolutely true. You've got to learn the basics. You've got to learn the relationship between light, the camera, your lens, and the final image. And then you can move on. Then you can start manipulating images with your camera in Photoshop, use all the techniques that you've, that you've learned but you have to learn them first if you really want to be a good photographer and to develop, no pun intended, from film days. Now, with a little camera like this, or even your phone, you can take great photos, even with very little knowledge. Put it in auto settings, point and shoot, that's what they want you to do. People with brains bigger than mine haven't spent millions of dollars and decades working on electronic brains to put into cameras and fancy sensors um, so that your camera take rubbish photos. Your camera is very sophisticated. It's not got close to our brains yet, but it's getting there. So don't let anybody tell you that auto is rubbish, you know, the auto function that you've got to be in manual and you've got all that sort of thing. You can take reasonable photos in auto 99% of the time. That's what the cameras are for. That's why, so that's why they developed them. That's, 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 you know, the brain in here is pretty good. The thing is that the auto settings in cameras are just for average light, average conditions. They can work average situations out and they can set the camera up uh, and take a decent photo. In extreme light conditions, very bright or very dark, situations where there's a lot of contrast, situations where things are moving very quickly, uh, those sort of odd situations, you need to get a bit beyond the auto settings. So that's where, again, this bit comes in. Your camera has got limitations on auto settings, but unless you understand how it works, unless you understand the light and the, the final image, you won't know how to adjust your camera. You'll get lost in the manual settings if you, if you don't work this thing out first in your head. So that's what I'd say. Don't diss auto settings. Don't do the professional thing. Oh, you're in auto. Oh, how awfully sad. What an amateur. I'm a professional, you know. I use manual all the time. Rubbish. It's not about you, what setting you use. It's about knowing what setting to use for the, for the situation. So don't let anybody bamboozle you with that snobbish load of nonsense. Now, the other thing with cameras and this whole idea that you have to spend mega bucks and you have to have the latest equipment... Uh, I mean, just think about it. I mean, people have been taking fantastic photos for over 100 years, nearly 200 years. Um, my hero.
heroes uh, like Ansel Adams and more recently Don McCullin, um, they used old equipment that now, you know, the, the photography snobs would sort of turn their noses up at. Um, and most of us wouldn't know where to start with that sort of gear. You know, go out in the field with something like Ansel Adams and look at look at the gear he'd got. Um, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know how to turn it on probably. Um, and most digital photographers now wouldn't know where to start with a film camera. But the point I'm trying to make is those old cameras took great photos, or rather, the photographers that had those old cameras in their hands took great photos. There's sort of a story which probably got distorted now um, with with retelling. Uh, some American war photographers a few years ago, probably alcohol was involved in all these things, and uh, they went on a tour of Iraq or Afghanistan, wherever, um, and they just took their phones uh, and they came back with the most incredible photos. They sort of challenged each other, you know, was it possible? Could we do this? And of course they could, because they were professionals, they knew what they were doing, um, and they got these incredibly visceral photographs. And you wouldn't know they were taken with phones. Would, no, even no idea you'd think they were taken with the most expensive cameras. But that's because they knew what they were doing. And they weren't hung up with the gear in their hands. So anyway, bottom line of this one is it's not your equipment, it's your brain. So it's an old cliche, but it's true, whichever way you look at it. Um, by all means, go out and buy an expensive camera if you can afford it, but I promise you, you're wasting your time if you haven't learned how it works first, and you haven't learned not just how the camera works, but how the light works, how the lenses work, how you manipulate all the gear to create the final image. That's what makes a great photographer, not the hardware in your hand. Now another myth that I'd like to bust, and this is going to be a bit more of a controversial one probably, and it might upset a few people, so just I would urge you to just stick with it to the end. Don't get uh, too shouty at the, uh, at the screen uh, while I'm talking. Um, but people who know me and have been on photo walks with me know exactly what I'm going to say now these um, tripods. Tripods are a, a wonderful tool, we all need them, I've got three. Um, what drives me mad and the myth that I, I want to bust really is that you need to use a tripod all the time if you're a proper photographer. Um, as I say, tripods are an essential piece of equipment just the same as a lens. Um, but you don't need to use the tripod all the time. I see so many people, I, I, I refer to them as posers, which sounds a little bit cruel, um, and, and it is unfair to people who actually know what they're doing and who are using them correctly, but I see so many photographers with their tripods out in broad daylight, um, they're shooting with a wide angle lens, um, they're shooting at 125th of a second, why, are they, why have they got a tripod? I don't get it. If you can't hand hold a camera steady at 125th of a second, then you've got serious medical condition um, and you have my sympathy. But um, most of us can, can cope quite easily. Um, now again, I'm not attacking people who use tripods per se because obviously there is a, a serious reason for using them. The main reason for using a tripod is that you're shooting in a situation and using a shutter speed that is too slow to, to hold in your hands without getting a blurred image. Um, none of us have got perfectly steady hands and the slower the shutter speed, the more likely we are to get a sort of slightly blurred image because we just can't hold the camera steady while the shutter's open. Um, so you're out at night or in low light situations, shooting light trails, you're, um, trying to blur waterfalls, you know, you've, even when you can have exposures shutter speeds you know, to two, three, five minutes or, or whatever and you, you know, obviously you can't hand hold, hand hold your camera steady for that sort of length of time um, and most of us would struggle to hold the camera steady for slower than a tenth of a second just say for sake of argument but it all depends what lens you're using and all sorts of other factors you can brace yourself there's all sorts of tricks you can use but, um, but yeah by all means use a tripod if you're shooting in low light or if you're using um, slow shutter speed for a whole myriad of reasons. Also, if you're studio based, if you've got a studio set up, you've got your lights, you've got your backdrops, you've got your reflectors, you've got all your gear, um, by all means use a tripod. You want your camera set up in the centre of, of, all, of all your gear 
the centre of your studio, you want it in the right place where you've got the light just right, you've got the backdrops just right, your reflectors, everything is perfect just right. You don't want to be walking around with a camera in your hand um, shooting from random positions all the time. So by all means, yeah, use your tripod. Um, I know lots of photographers, really, really good photographers as well, who use a tripod pretty well all the time and they do it to, to slow themselves down um, because it can be quite easy. I mean, I, 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 I'm not too bad at it because I was brought up on film, so I tend to think very carefully about each individual shot I take, but with digital cameras and with 64 gig memory cards and even bigger, I mean, you can, you can take thousands of photos in a session and you can, you can do the old scattergun approach. You just fire away um, and, you know, you might take 2,000 photos and five could be absolute genius, but it's been pure luck, you know, it's been nothing down to, to your particular skills. So, yes, I know a lot of photographers who try to adopt the old film mentality when they, you know, they don't want to be shooting loads and loads of photos just at random. They want to think every single image through and having a, a tripod and having to set it up slows them down mentally, physically, and, and every, you know, emotionally even, to get themselves in the right frame of mind. Totally accept all of that. I've got some friends who take incredible photos, really, really, really skillful people, and they swear by their tripods and use them all the time sort of person I'm getting at really um, go up to the Round Cathedral in Lincoln and you'll see people up there with their tripods like I say it's broad daylight you go up and ask them what they're doing and they'll say oh, I'm taking a photo of the cathedral mate what setting do you use it? Like, oh well you know it's f11 125th of a second why are you using a tripod and they look at you as though you've insulted them um, so that's the sort of thing it's like the settings in your camera um, don't diss the auto settings just for the hell of it because you're a snob. Don't diss somebody that's not using a tripod just because you're a snob or whatever. Um, if people know what they're doing, they can use whatever settings they like. Use a tripod, not use a tripod. It's about knowing what you're doing. And it's about not doing things. like Don't shoot in manual because you think that makes you a professional photographer. Don't always use a tripod because you think it makes you a professional photographer or makes you look like a professional photographer because I'm fairly certain a lot of people do that. Like they take the cameras out, uh, set up with a tripod, and they know people are looking at them, oh, he must know what he's doing, he's, he's, you know, he must be a professional, he's got a tripod. Look at that bloke over there, he's just walking around with his knee hand. Um, it's, it's snobbery, it's not, I hate that sort of thing. So, yeah, tripods. Know when to use your tripod, and you know, don't just use it for the heck of it, or to, you know, as a, as a crutch to, to sort of pose on with. Um, yeah, rant over, me and tripods. We get on, we know our place.